to the Prophecy Club. Some of you know each Hebrew letter represents a number, picture, sound, and color. But what you may not know is it also contains a code, which he says unseals Daniel. In this new Prophecy Club DVD called Hebrew, the Rainbow Language, David Matthews will show you the code which unseals Daniel and unseals prophecies of the future and potentially unseals the rest of the Bible. Now let's go listen to David Matthews in Hebrew, the Rainbow Language. And you'll be able to have that DNA on the inside of you. Listen to me. Every word of Yahweh that is spoken vibrates at specific frequencies. And did you know that you are literally a, a transformer, You're an electrical transformer? You have the ability to receive power, electrical power. You are an electrical circuit. And if there's some sort of sickness or disease inside of you, that electrical circuit is broken to an extent. Did you know that there are certain frequencies? Science has proven we'll look at it tonight before we're finished. There are certain musical tones that science uses to affect human DNA repair. Wow, if I could tell you that it's here in the Hebrew language, wouldn't you want that? Well, that word satam, which is the word for sealed, it has a peculiar letter attached to the front of it. It has the top of me, and we've already looked at that. It means perfect and out blemish. Am I correct? Well, that Hebrew letter at the front of it is the letter samek. Now, it's interesting because it's the hardest of all the original letters to trace its origin. Now, that might not mean much to you, but you remember that Yeshua was after the order of Melchizedek or Melchizedek? And what was it said of Melchizedek? That he, had, he was a king of Salem, but he had no lineage, no origin, right? Why do you think that they would take a letter that we couldn't really trace its roots and origins and then attach it to this thing that's being sealed? Do you think maybe that it has to do with this language and the one who's been sealed, that he also has no origin he has no beginning. He is the beginning. Talking about our Messiah. Does that make sense? Yes. And if you look, I don't know if it showed up. No, nope, it didn't show up there. It shows up as a letter S there. See the letter S in the middle of the page? It should have been a little thorn. It looks almost like a tree with bare limbs on it in the Hebrew language. And it didn't transfer over. In fact, it is rendered thorn in Hebrew. And when you remember Mount Sinai, it was named that because most people think it was the mountain where the thorns were. And you remember the burning, burning, burning bush? It's the same word. Hmm, I wonder if there's a connection. The word Sinai in Hebrew, the Psalmic noon root, means learned man. If you put the yod on the end of it, Sinai, it means my learned man. Yahweh brought the children of Israel out of Egypt, a, langu- a nation that had been bereft of their language for 430 years. He brings them to Mount Sinai. And at the base of Mount Sinai, He introduces them to the learned man. Who was the learned man? Our Messiah. Yahweh made flesh. What was He learned in? The Word of Yahweh. He was reintroducing them to the one that was the living Word. In fact, the rabbis teach, and some of you may discredit them, but I submit that there's so much we can learn from them. The rabbis teach that when Yahweh was speaking on Mount Sinai, and I know you remember the passage when the noise of the shofar was getting louder and louder and louder, and it talks about the trees being uprooted, the rocks breaking, and their their cows producing their children. You remember that? Well, the word for shofar is the same word, the same root letters as the word safer, which means book. The words written, and the rabbis teach that you could literally see the words as they were coming down off the top of that mountain. You could literally see the word of Yahweh as it would encounter anything that was in His way. And it caused whatever it came in contact with to literally burst into the earth. My goodness, don't you think that the very one that said, Yahi or let there be light, spoke creation into existence, has the ability to change you? Hell. Well, guess what? He can't. No. You're the one that can change you. But the only way that you can change you is to say what His Word says about who you are and about... You know, one of the reasons that we have the difficult circumstances we're in today is simply because we're not saying what His Word says 
about who he is first and who we are next. Does that make sense to you? Wow. The books of Daniel being unsealed. You'll see the picture of the lamb slain, just like you saw under the shadow pictures of the old covenant sacrifices, the lamb slain. That lamb is going to be finally revealed and unsealed so that the whole house of Israel, I'm talking about all of us that have been scattered to the four corners of the world. Sometimes that word Israel alienates folks. Church people say, well, you know, we replaced Israel. No, it's just we don't understand what the word Israel means. In Hebrew, it's the word Yesharel. Say that with me, Yesharel. It means those that stand up right in front of El, the strong one. And so it's a broad term. It includes all of us that acknowledge Him as our, our Redeemer and our Savior. Does that make sense? This language is going to be revealing and unsealing Genesis to Revelation. It's going to reveal to the whole house of Israel the pierced one, the one that was caught in the thorns. You remember the lamb, the ram that was caught in the thorns? Isn't that ironic? How was he caught in the thorns by his horns? You remember your Messiah being hung on an execution stake? You remember what was placed around his head? Crown of thorns. I wonder if there's a connection. I wonder if that Samek has anything to do with it. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Hmm. Well, that word for lamb that's used in Psalm 22, I didn't, it somehow didn't show up in my notes. And Psalm 22 is known as a messianic psalm. And it talks about Yeshua being pierced. And I thought, my goodness, maybe we should address that. And it happens to be the word for pierce is the word karah. And it means to open something, to pierce it, to dig it, to excavate it. And I thought, wow, it sounds just like Adam being told to open up, pierce the ground, excavate, dig out the ground if you want to see who Messiah was. Isn't that important? So we've got a pattern here in the physical sealing of Daniel. He seals the written Hebrew language, making it accessible only to those who would work the ground just as Adam was told. I submit to you. Listen to me carefully so that don't, you don't accuse me of saying anything incorrectly. That lamb that you see underneath the sacrificial system could not eradicate sin, nor its results, sin, sickness, death, and disease. It could only atone for it. It could only put it off until the lamb, Messiah, came and satisfied the debt. Does that make sense? Now you see why that language has got to take on a different form. The language is about to be revealed so it can do the very same thing that Yeshua did. He's going to show you how that you can affect your life, your physiology, your physical body, your circumstances. And I'm convinced it's here in the Hebrew language. And I believe that's the function for it. I believe we're going to begin to see the manifestations of salvation, healing, deliverance, and protection on a scale that's never been seen as a result of the restoration of this language. I believe... It's the DNA of creation. I believe it's the language of Eden. In fact, from my observation, and it remains to be seen whether or not you'll agree with me, it seems conclusive that from creation, I believe even before creation, Genesis 1-1, that there was a means of communication that was established by Yahweh, the words and letters of which were devised into vessels. Did you know that your words are vessels? They're containers. They're either faith containers or not. Faith containers or not, am I correct? Those words contain his DNA. Isaiah 55, 11, So shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. It will not return unto me void. He said it will accomplish the thing I sent it to do. Did he mean that? Is it happening in your life? On a limited scale, it is. But it should be happening every time you and I speak as if we're speaking his words. Amen. Well, in Genesis chapter 1, we see... This vessel being referred to as light, the word or. And I submit that the moment Yahweh speaks creation into existence and says, let there be light, this light becomes a vessel. The light becomes a body. Does that make sense to you? I believe that the body that this light had would have been our Messiah. Does that make sense? I don't know if I believe that. John chapter 1 says he was the light of the world. So I trapped you, didn't I? And it also says that our God is a God of light, doesn't it? And it also says, correct me if I'm wrong, that you are children of the light, doesn't it? Walk in the light. See, there's things that you had packaged away in the dark recesses of your mind that now we're calling them back out front. Am I correct? Now, so the words that emanate forth from Him, they're also light. 
And it's not a strict sin to assume that word and light are used synonymously throughout the Scripture to imply or refer to the seed of Yahweh. And so I believe that when word is first spoken like, Yehi or, let there be light, that light was given a body, and I believe that that body would have been the personification of Yahweh Himself in the earth, Yeshua. It's just that He had a light body. I believe that it was the same body that Adam would have been created with. I believe that Adam and Eve had a body that was clothed with light. That's why in Genesis chapter 2 it says that they were naked and not ashamed. Don't have time to go into it tonight, but all you have to do is go back and look and see in verse in chapter 3, you find them in a naked condition after the encounter with the serpent. And they lost that clothing of light. I would submit to you they lost the covering of Yahweh's word at that particular Isn't it any wonder that our encounter with the serpent causes us by times to lose that covering of light? Doesn't he appear as an angel of light? Well, that phrase, Yehi Or, has a numeric value. Yehi Or, let there be light. And its numeric value is 232. It just happens. It's the same value as the phrase, Devar Yahweh. It means the word of Yahweh or the word of God. So let there be light has the same numeric value as the word of God. See, you think I'm just pulling this out, but it's here. In addition, the value of that phrase, my firstborn, Bechori, which is how Israel is described in Exodus chapter 4, verse 22, and how your Messiah is described in Colossians 1, 25, Bechori, my firstborn, it also has the same numeric value as let there be light. That make sense? And again, I believe that the physiology of creation... We'll be right back after this message. Lindsay Williams has done it again. He's come out with another awesome DVD, this one entitled Health Tips from the Elite. Did you know that no president of the United States has ever died from cancer? Why? What do they know that you don't? President Ronald Reagan was diagnosed with colon cancer when he was president. He imported a substance that was illegal to be used in the United States at the time. He never had a reoccurrence. There is no reason to suffer from cancer, heart disease, diabetes, chronic fatigue syndrome, multiple sclerosis, hepatitis C, hormonal imbalance, vascular disease, immunological imbalance. It's all in the new DVD, Health Tips from the Elite, not available on the Internet. you got to call 785-266-1112. That's 785-266-1112. Health Tips from the Elite. Daniel Daves made a DVD called I Saw the Dollar Debt. He's a missionary from Costa Rica, and he had a three-part dream I really believe is of God. He was shown the death of the U.S. dollar, its global impact, and that all property lines will be dissolved, the rise of the one world government and its following currency. Lindsay Williams has made a new DVD called Cyprus, the Elite Money Grab. Topics are Cyprus, the startling real story, the American dollar, how long, healthcare, a trap, America, the world's only hope, Saudi Arabia, look out, Iran, saber rattling, derivatives, collapse being discussed, It's called The Money Gift Offer. Both DVDs valued at $60 for a gift to the ministry of just $25 or more. 785-266-1112 or prophecyclub.com. The Money Gift Offer. And now, back to the program. And again, I believe that the physiology of creation changed after the fall. And that includes the body of Adam and Eve. And I believe that they existed in a physical plane a spiritual plane, rather, that was not as affected by the limitations of the physical that you and I are subject to, I posit, and I believe that there are others that agree with me, that blood that courses through your veins is nothing short of congealed or slowed down light as a result of fall. In fact, scientists have examined blood, and there are tiny microscopic particles inside the blood called somatids, and they emanate light. Hmm, Uh, maybe there's a connection here. Most people that have studied this subject agreed that sound is also light at a slower speed. Did you hear that? A slower speed or a slower frequency. 
And so I would submit that it wouldn't be a stretch then to admit that Yeshua, Jesus, as you call him, if you're not familiar with the Hebrew term, is this seed in a physical body. He was the living word, the DNA of Yahweh. He was in that light form, and then that light form was slowed down, and it's congealed and placed into a physical body that could be tangibly handled and touched. John says, we've handled the word. Does that make sense? Since he's the firstborn of creation... And he's the living word. I believe that the written word, the spoken word, would have also been the firstborn of Yahweh. And like Messiah who appears as a manifest presence of Yahweh throughout the Old Testament, that language was concealed and disguised by Daniel. Messiah is disguised as a suffering servant. The lamb who would be slain, he would not be recognized by the world until the season that you and I are fast approaching. And it's this language, I'm convinced, that it's going to jointly restore the kingdom and its subjects, including, I believe, your physical bodies. And it's interesting because when Yeshua made the public introduction of his ministry after he'd been in the wilderness for 40 days, he comes out, and you read it in Luke chapter 4, and he reads from the scroll of Isaiah. He's actually reading Isaiah chapter 61, verses 1 through 7. And... In verse 1 through 7, I believe it's around verse 7, we're told that it's going to change our garment. We're going to be given a garment that would cause beauty to be transferred from ashes. Remember that? Well, the word for beauty here is the word pe'er, which is translated beauty, but it's also a bridal tiara, a bridal crown, a bridal head covering. But the two-letter root, listen to this carefully. You're going to exchange your garments of mourning, your garments of ashes, for this Beautiful wedding tiara or garment. But look at what the root of this word for Pierre is. It's the peresh root, which means the fruit of your lips. Did you know it's the fruit of your lips that's going to clothe you and identify you in the last days? Doesn't that sound like what would have clothed Adam and Eve, that light garment? Isn't it amazing that when you, the fruit of your lips, this bridal tiara, this language that's coming out of our mouth, our mouth, this crown of glory, when it's spoken, that literally identifies you and I as that company known as the bride of Messiah. Isn't that powerful? Well, you're going to be given beauty instead of ashes. The word for ashes here is the word affair. And it is translated as ashes or worthlessness, but it's interesting because it is etymologically, linguistically, it's the same as that word in Genesis chapter 3 where we're told that the that Satan would consume the dust and that Adam would return to dust. Hmm. Now, he was going to return to dust because of the carnal fleshly body and the absence of that light garment. Am I correct? And as long as Adam remains in the fleshly condition, sort of reminds you of Romans chapter 7 and 8 when you're told, there's therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Messiah Yeshua who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit, for the law of the Spirit of life and Messiah Yeshua has made me free from the law of sin and death. So as long as I'm in the flesh, I'm going to be that dust that the serpent consumes. Does that make sense? But on the other hand, if I'm walking after the Spirit, instead of these ashes, instead of this dust, instead of this worthlessness, I can have that pe'er, that nuptial crown, that wedding tiara, sitting on the top of my head because it's of the language that I'm speaking out of mouth, that's what's beginning to clothe me and identify me. And I will no longer be the dust that the serpent's able to consume. That ought to get you excited because the enemy's coming with lying signs and wonders. Say amen right there. Now, I'm as convinced as I am standing here that we're on the cusp of seeing an introduction of the greatest overwhelming potential that we've ever seen in our, in our lives. And if the enemy has lying signs and wonders, I think that if Yahweh didn't at least give us equal to that, he'd be doing you a disservice. Now, if he gives it to us and we don't do something with it, that's not his fault. Amen? This body of dust that resulted after the fall had no life, light, or blood in it. The restored tongue, the living word, the Hebrew language, has life, light, and sound frequency, color resonating through it, Not only is it able to affect the individual body, but I believe it's going to unite those scattered bones like Ezekiel talks talks about in Ezekiel 37 and therefore restore the whole body. And I have to ask you a question. 
Can words repair DNA? Hmm. I believe it was this light that we were talking about that was uniquely packaged in Noah's rainbow. And that rainbow of Noah forever became a symbol of the Restoration Covenant. The word for bow is the word keshet. And it does mean a bow. It means to bend. How many of you know how a rainbow occurs? You don't, you don't see a rainbow unless it's refracted. It's light that's bent through some sort of a crystalline prism. Isn't that amazing? It has to be refracted through a prism or a lens such as water or the eyes. Now, I want you to think about that because your eyes become the substance. It's a, your eyes are a crystalline fo- uh, surface. In fact, your body is about 70% water. And so you have a crystalline makeup on the inside that should be able to hear the word or receive the word of Yahweh and refract that. And you should be able to see that rainbow covenant, that garment of many colors, as an aura around you if you're walking in the light. Oh, that's a far stretch of imagination. I don't know. Well, I don't care if you believe it or not. I'm expecting to see that. I'm expecting to see people that are filled with the Word of Yah, resonating with His Word, and literally be able to see the rainbow of Yah, the colors of Yah emanating from them. There are seven primary colors that are visible to your eye in the rainbow. And each one of these represent a separate vibrational frequency that's called harmonics. An interesting thing about it, we're talking about light now, right? If you slow it down, it enters the realm of sound. Did you know that there are people that have been tested that say that they can hear colors? What? And you thought that you were the odd one. When it's slowed down, it enters the realm of sound. In other words, when a sonic frequency is multiplied by 40 octaves... It turns into an electromagnetic spectrum that we call electromagnetic spectrum that we call light. Scientists acknowledge that light functions as a messenger, yet color is the message. And like plants, listen to this. How many of you remember your biology classes? How many of you remember photosynthesis? Did you know that like plants, you are photosynthetic? Your eyes and your skin are solar panels. All you have to do is stay inside the house for any length of time and you become vitamin D deficient. Where do you get vitamin D? From the sun. What does vitamin D do? Vitamin D produces melatonin, I believe is what it's called. It gives you the ability to sleep at night. It helps you to have shalom. It helps you to have peace. It helps you to rest. Hello. It does so many other things, including warding off Infections and diseases, hmm, sounds sort of like His Word, doesn't it? Psalm 119, 130, the entrance of His words give light. How many of you have ever studied Psalm 119? Did you know that there are, there are 22 stanzas in Psalm 119? Each stanza begins with a letter in the order of their occurrence of the Hebrew olive bait. The first stanza begins with the letter Aleph. The second stanza, the letter Bait. Each stanza has eight verses. Now the interesting thing is that when you get down to the 17th stanza, the letter that is the one that begins that verse is the Hebrew letter Pei. And the Hebrew letter Pei, if you look at it in a Paleo language, represents the mouth. Do this with me. Pei. What came out of your mouth? Pei. Your breath. What came out of the breath, the mouth of Yahweh? His breath, the breath of lives, His Word. The entrance of His Word brings light. Psalm 119, 130 begins that 17th stanza when He tells us that if His Word is spoken, that it brings light into our bodies, and it just so happens that it's connected to the mouth. I submit to you that you can take His Word, and it doesn't matter what is going on in your life or around you, you can begin to speak His Word. And if it's a dark situation, a dark circumstance, you can begin to speak His Word, and the entrance of His Word will bring light. Now, we say we believe it. Either we have not been putting it into practice, you know, and I'm, I'm not being mean or ups, I'm not upset with anybody because this is an indictment against all of us. Something has to change. Say Amen. Well, that Hebrew letter pay has a numeric value when it's in its final form of 800. And it's just ordinal form 
its value is 80. And it's interesting because 8 is the number of new beginnings. Isn't that powerful? Well, let's look a little bit further at that Hebrew word for bow, rain bow, keshet. It also has a numeric value of 800. Oh, just that was a coincidence that it was connected to that Hebrew letter pay, wasn't it? Do you think maybe that when Yahweh spoke His word into existence and the rainbow was a sign of His covenant, have you ever noticed that you only see the top half of the rainbow? I wonder where the bottom half is. Hello? I'm serious. You only see the top. It, I believe literally what you're seeing would be the auditory aperture where you not only what you hear, but you would have literally be seeing the mouth of Yahweh as He pursed His lips to speak His language into existence. When that rainbow was formed, the Word of Yah was issued forth through those rain droplets and was reflect, refracted into light. Does that make sense? Sounds possible, sounds feasible to me. It's interesting because even the Greek language substantiates this. When Yeshua says, I'm the Alpha and Omega, the Omega is the last letter of the Greek Aleph Bay. Guess what? Omega has a numeric value of 800. Hmm. Well, the Hebrew letter Tav, which I have the Tav underneath the bottom of that, the Omega, it has a value of 400. And if you look at the reference to that Hebrew letter Tav, it's the cornerstone of all of our covenant because it means just that. Time has run out, but I want to say thank you for listening and thank you for your prayers and your gifts of support. God bless. Now from the Prophecy Club, some exciting opportunities for you. David Matthews teaches Hebrew on a letter level. Now some of you know that each Hebrew letter represents a number, picture, sound, and color. But what you probably don't know is it also contains a code a code which unseals the prophecies of Daniel. The topics are Hebrew language is a code tied to prophecy. Hebrew language prophesies the future. Letters represent the DNA of Yahweh. New World Order efforts to change our DNA. Weapons to stand against the genetic modification. Jacob's Ladder and the Human DNA. It's a double DVD set by David Matthews valued at $45 all for a gift of just $20 to the Prophecy Club. Call 785-266-1112 or go to prophecyclub.com and order Hebrew, the rainbow language. That's Hebrew, the rainbow language. In the Rob Skiba gift offer, his first DVD is Mythology, UFOs, and the Coming Great Deception. Topics are Sumerian, Egyptian, and Greek pantheons, the Coming Great Deception, UFOs and aliens, interdimensional portals, transhumanism, and the quest to be like gods, giants and hybrids, and in Babylon Rising, the topics are the signs in the heavens, Babylon in the last days, New World Order conspiracies, secret societies and the occult's obsession with the numbers 322, tetrads or blood red moons in the eclipses in the days ahead, the feasts of God and how they relate to the last days, the tribulation survival plan, and 2045, the year man becomes immortal. Topics will be Genesis 6, Nephilim, Hybrid Humans, War with Hybrids, Hybrids Among Us, The Injection of Immortality, all three DVDs valued at $90, available for a gift of just $50 at prophecyclub.com. The Prophecy Club's famous summer blowout is about to end. Right now, you can still get six DVDs of your choice, normally valued at over $180, all for a gift to the ministry of just $100. The offer expires August the 31st. Not available on the internet? You gotta call 785-266-1112. Six DVDs for a gift of $100 or more. Ends August 31st, 785-266-1112.